Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your patience. Um, we'll just give you a minute to, to come to the front. Um, thanks for joining us for match day minus one ahead of a trip to Leicester tomorrow. And Anton, we'll begin with you, if that's OK. Sure. Hi, Serena. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, Anton, bonus <laughs> points. You Thank win. You. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. Um, how do you say it in Dutch? Gefeliciteerd. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, uh, Serena, look, first off, um, let's talk about team news. How is everybody? And I presume, how good does it feel to have Fran in and around the squad again? Yeah. Um, of course, we were at 25, that's what we said. Unfortunately, not everyone's fit. Uh, so Lauren James uh, is not ready. Um, she won't be ready for Tuesday also. Uh, Lot is on the pitch, you saw that the other day, but she'll be on the pitch and we'll assess her today and hopefully she gets through right. Everyone else is good. No, anything to worry about with Lauren? No, not to worry about. Um, she picked up a concussion and as you know, then we have to be very careful and follow the, the protocol as we always do. So that's then just really too short for the two upcoming games. Um, a lot talk this week and the build-up to the squad announcement has been around sort of the makeup of the, the England squad and, and professional football in England and how whether it's representative of the country in which we live in. We talked previously about it, but are you happy with the change of pace we're seeing in professional football and how it potentially mirrors society in terms of representation? Well, I'm happy with all the things we're doing um, and that doesn't change overnight. We've spoken about that before. So what we... You know, when you start doing things really, really intense, it's not going to change in a month or two months. Um, but now with Discover My Talent, with things going on in the FA, Discover My Talent, the Emerge Talent Training center, Centers, I think there's more access, or there's access to football for everyone. And hopefully in the future, as quick as possible, it will change. And we see what we see in society, the same amount of everyone in society is playing in football and playing part in top football too. Thank you. Mary, nice to see you. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Um, look, there's always lots to talk to you about. <sighs> um, okay. Let's start though with um, the sort of expectation on this England team, but when it comes to sort of not just on the pitch, but now, do you feel there's a greater expectation on this team? Because there's been a lot of sort of talk around your interaction with the fans and relationship with the fans over the last sort of last interna uh, international breaks. Yeah, I mean, ex expectation of the team is obviously a huge compliment um, in terms of the way people expect us to win and, and things like that. Um, I think what you're referring to in terms of the accessibility that people get to us as players, um, of course, is something that I think it's a hot topic of discussion really at the moment. Um, it's something that we as players are experiencing um, in a very different way with the profile of the game changing. Um, and we love to interact with the fans, um, but it's it's becoming at times really difficult to to keep everybody happy um, and to interact with as many people as possible. And we're obviously so grateful that thousands and thousands of people want to to come and meet us and talk to us. But the reality of it is that w if if that's the expectation, we're always going to fall short. And I think um, I think the emphasis on it needs to needs to switch now. Um, and and we love that we can be so connected because of where the, how the game's grown. Um, but equally, I think we are subject to a lot of um, comments and um, an unnecessary, yeah, I don't want to say abuse, I think that's a bit strong, but you know, at times it's just, it's, it's an addition to the game that, that we don't need and, and we love it, but you know, it, it's becoming really difficult to, 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 to maintain now. So yeah, I think we're doing, our, we're doing our best, but I think it's always going to be a hot topic at the minute. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, Kiara Keating's been given her first senior call-up, yep. 19 years old, very young. Um, what have you seen from her this week that's impressed you? Um, lots of things. I think, obviously, she's a, she's a good goalkeeper and she's, she's a good person as well. Um, I think she's fitted into the goalkeeper union and the team really easily. Um, she's got a big, bubbly personality, um, which kind of suits, suits, I mean, definitely the goalkeeper group and, and I think the wider team as well. Um, so yeah, it's been fun having her around and I'm looking forward to working with her more. Any big birthday plans for the boss tonight? So many, um, <laughs> so many. You would not believe the party that we have in store, match day minus one. I can imagine. <laughs> um, 
Serena, in terms of the, the Women's Nations League itself, obviously a, a mixed bag of results in that opening round. Because of that, I know you want to win every game, but do you have to win all of your last games? Well, we always want to win. We know the expect expectations are high, um, but we have our own expectations too. And uh, what we really want to do, we had an, um, of course, we lost the last game. We were not happy with that. Uh, and we want to bounce back. And what we're just working on is, you know, improve our game again, do the things right and play very well against Belgium and have a good result. Uh, that's how we approach it. Um, so th and that's, those are the expectations too. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Bo. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, I'll start with you, Mary. Um, I know you, you like keeping clean sheets. You're a goalkeeper. You enjoy keeping clean sheets. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's five matches since, since England last had one. Why, why do you think that is? is? Is it down to sort of maybe, you know, the rustiness coming back from the World Cup or is it, you know, individual errors? What, what do you think? Um, I feel that um, obviously we all like keeping clean sheets um, and that's what we always try to do. Um, I think we obviously haven't quite got that right just yet. Um, but ultimately, you can't, a clean sheet doesn't define a, a, a performance in any way. Um, there's lots of different things going on, lots of different factors that play into a performance. Um, but ultimately, I think we know that we can be better um, and we're always looking to improve and, and, and strive. And I feel like that's the exciting thing about it. Um, we know that we haven't quite hit the levels that we'd like to. Um, and that's what we're focusing on doing. Thank you. And Serena, I just want to ask about the impact of, of the new players, Grace and, and Kiara, coming in. What, what energy have, have they brought to the camp this week? Yeah, of course, they, first of all, they showed uh, performances at their club in the Women's Super League. They did really well. They've also played with the under-23s, where they impressed too. Um, and what they brought here, well, I'm just really happy that they just come here and play and uh, compete with all the other players. Um, so be teammate, but also compete and show, OK, I am here. I'm not just here to be here. I'm also here to compete for minutes. And they've done really well so far. Only We only had two training sessions, but we're happy with their performances. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. We'll go to Tom. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, Serena, happy birthday. Um, yesterday, the Belgium and Netherlands and Germany bid was officially launched for the World Cup. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, not only as the opponents that England are facing, but your home country as well. Would they be a good host country? And what do you make of that joint bid? Yeah, I think that joint um, hosts would be really great. Um, and it's exciting, of course, when that, that's in Europe and, um, and also my home country would be part of it too. So I'm excited about that bit. Um, and also I think when it would be happening, would be happening, uh, I think the travel distances, the, um, the stadiums you could, you could play in would be really nice too. And, and how much better do you think Belgium have become since you last faced them um, as a team? Are they get, how, how much stronger are they now? Yeah, of course they're really competing for something. Uh, the Nations League. Um, the other two games were friendlies. I think they're in a very different situation at the moment. They play a different shape. They play with different players. They have been in transition. They're very competitive. They're very well organized and they're tough in duels too. Um, and as they showed in September, they, um, yeah, they're very hard to beat. Thank you. And Mary, can I ask you one question as well, please? Um, we spoke to some of the younger players in the squad on Tuesday, but one, one we didn't speak to was also still quite young, Mayor Letizia, you know very well mm -hmm. from Club and Country. I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about what she's brought to Club and Country and, and how maybe have you seen her settling into an England environment a bit more now that she's got a few call-ups? Yeah, I mean, I think Mayor and her, her own performances, you know, she do, does herself justice every single time. Um, she's an important part of the United defence and obviously she's she's breaking into this squad regularly now and um, I know the type of character she is and, and how hard working she is and, and how she, she wants to improve and, and keep developing. Um, so yeah, I, I have no doubt that, that she's going to continue to do that and um, yeah, I think I think what's exciting is you can see the levels that, that, that Maya can, can hit and where she can try to get to. Um, and she's got plenty of time on her side. So, yeah, she's, she's in a really good spot. What's great about Maya is if you hang out with her, you just feel like the funniest person in the world because she laughs at pretty much everything that you say. So, yeah, she's, she's, a, good, she's a good girl. Not because you're funny? Not because I'm funny, no. <laughs> Not at all. She'll sure, be funny. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. We'll just go back. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Question to Mary from BBC East Midlands today. Just wondering how it feels for you to be playing in front of a big East Midlands crowd just down the road from where you grew up. It's great. Midlands massive. I have no doubt they'll come out in, in big numbers. 
um, yeah, it's always special to play, I think, close to home. Um, I've not really had the opportunity to, to do that in Nottingham yet. Hopefully that is on the cards one day soon. Um, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, <laughs> but I think obviously Leicester, that, that was the club that I grew up playing for as well. That was my centre of excellence. I know, I know we, don't talk, we don't call them centre of excellences anymore, but that was the team that I really feel I did a lot of my developing in my younger years. Um, so it's really special to, to go back in an England shirt. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And my grand can come as well, so that's a huge, huge bonus. I'm really excited about that. She never gets to come to games. Hi, um, a question for you, Serena. Happy birthday, by the way. Um, we're from BBC Radio Leicester, so we're very excited to have you come to Leicester. Um, we just wanted to know, how important is it for the Lionesses to come to different stadiums and locations across the country like Leicester? Yeah, well, I think it's really nice we play, we play across the country. This country is really big. Um, so people across the country can then come and see us play and get connected with us. So I think it's really nice. Of course, I've been in Leicester and I like the stadium too. But in England, there's so many very nice, good stadiums and the pitches, mainly the pitches are really good too. So we're excited to come, uh, to come over there and play tomorrow and uh, play for 32,000 people. Thanks very much. We'll go to Catherine just next to you. Thanks so much. Hi, Serena. I know we're only early into the Nations League group, but it's quite close, you know, teams taking points off each other. Is that a sign that the Nations League kind of works as a format in sort of comparison to, you know, we sometimes see qualifying groups where they're a bit more lopsided? Yeah, I think this is the reason why the Nations League started. We want to get more competitive games. As we said before, um, when we would play games ahead of the game, you should win it. Uh, and that's not the case anymore. We also see the development of the game. So we, were, well, historically we had top countries, but now and the, the country just beneath the top. But everything is getting closer and closer to each other, um, and that's really good for the game because it's exciting. We come and watch exciting games, and when you and we're playing the games that are really challenging for us, so that even grows the game even more. And Sandy McKeever was named in the Scotland squad last week. I just wondered whether you'd had, was that something you were expecting? Had you kind of had a conversation with her beforehand about possibly switching allegiances? On? Yeah, she told me that uh, a, a time ago. So uh, I knew this could happen and congratulations for her. And, and Mary, I know you had like a, a lot of young aspiring goalkeepers at training the other day. And yeah. um, I don't want to go back to your shirt, but obviously it did sell out kind of very quickly <laughs> a few weeks ago. So it must be nice for you to kind of see the impact you're having on, on young girls that are now growing up wanting to be goalkeepers and not just centre forwards. Nice. No, it's incredibly rewarding. Um, for me, this is really the great, greater purpose in why I do what I do. Obviously, I love playing football, love diving around in the mud, love representing my country and, and, and playing football at the highest level. But to be able to, to give back to people, um, to young kids coming through, to be able to change the way things are done and, and influence that and give kids opportunities that I, I never had um, had the opportunity to do. So I think, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. Very, very pinched me to have 103 <coughs> kids, I think it was. And they were, I think... Many of them were, were gifted shirts um, with either mine, Robux, or Hannah's name on the back. And again, just, just brilliant for them to have that access and to meet with us and to have their own personal shirt. Obviously, it's been a hot topic. So, and I know that, that, um, that there's going to be more shirts coming before the end of the year. So I'm really, really excited about that as well. Thanks, Catherine. We'll take a final question from Sandra. Hi, Serena. Hi, Mary. Happy birthday, Serena. Um, just a question for you, Mary, following on from what you, some of what you said there. Mm -hmm. Just obviously, uh, you know, you being a senior goalkeeper here and seeing Kiara come through, and you mentioned just your journey from Leicester, just uh, how important is it for you to be role model to someone like Kiara, you know, with all the, the spotlight coming on her as a young and up-and-coming goalkeeper? And also, what kind of memories does it bring back of your own kind of first call up for, for England? Um, yeah, for me, I think... I when if if I ever thought I was going to get to this position where I was the senior goalkeeper of the group and in the position that I am, I always wanted to create a really good goalkeeper group and dynamic where we can all uh, kind of take the mick out of each other a little bit, but we're all brought together by our desire to be the best versions of ourselves and work really, really hard. So hopefully that's an environment that Kiara can just feel really comfortable in fitting in. It looks like she has done so far, but you'll have to ask her because I don't want to put words in her mouth. Um, and yeah, again, I think sometimes I experienced very different goalkeeper unions growing up. Um, sometimes it was hard for me to come into groups with older players, um, and that's not an environment that I that I want to create. Um, and and hopefully that that is something that that 
she, you know, she can she can enjoy and really just make the most and have great memories. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Love you.